Hello everyone, welcome to my class. Today we will talk about diffraction grating. A diffraction grating, a repetitive array of diffraction element either aperture or obstacle that has the effect of producing periodic alteration in the phase. Amplitude or both of an emergent wave is said to be a diffraction grating. Okay? It means that suppose we have a aperture and then if we alternatively put closed and open aperture or if we put multi slits then this arrangement is called grating. This we have all also talked about while discussing uh, multi slit arrangement. Okay, now, you, here you see that this red lines they represents closed portion while this separation between the two red line that is the white background it represents the open portion. Okay. Now, if you shine a plane wave on this arrangement then what will happen is that the portion of the wave which is falling on the opaque part or closed part of this aperture that would uh, not pass while the portion of the light which is falling on the open uh, part, part or the transparent part it will be allowed to pass. Okay, such an arrangement is called grating. Now, the closed and open portion are, uh, are apertures it can also be replaced with periodic alteration in the phase. Now, here when I am saying that a part is closed and next one is open, then, uh, uh, then next part is uh, again closed, then uh, the part which is next to uh, this closed part is again open. This alternative arrangement of open and closed or transmitting or non-transmitting apertures, it leads to an amplitude modulation. Okay. Suppose this is the plane wave which we launched and due to the amplitude modulation created by this grating, the output here you will see that a, pa a portion would be absent from here and this part will allow uh, the transmittance of the light here again absent, present, absent, present. Then you see that some part of this diffracting element is allow uh, are allowing the transmission of the light while some part is stopping it. Okay? It is mimicking the multi slit arrangement okay? where we have open slit at few places and closed and these open slits are separated by a closed portion. Okay? It is a periodic arrangement. The same periodic arrangement is also here in the grating too. But when we talk about open and closed portion then it means that we are modulating the amplitude of the emergent wave. Okay? The same output can also be achieved if we modulate the phase. How the phase can be modulated? Suppose we have a glass plate, then what we can do is that we can divide this glass plate in small strips and each strip may be assigned a periodic refractive index variation. Now, here what you see is that this strip has refractive index n1 while this n2, this again n1, this n2 and so on. Now, you see that the refract, the, the, these strips which are of refractive indices n1 and n, n2, they are periodically varying, they are alternating okay? and this due to this alternation, if we launch a plane wave then what will happen is that a part of the wave will see higher refractive index while the other part will say lower refractive index and due to this periodic arrangement this periodicity will also be imprinted on the wave okay? and therefore ultimately we are getting almost same type of pattern these two types of grating will produce the same effects ultimately. Okay. Now, you see that just by changing the refractive index, we are playing with the phase of the wave which is passing through the, the strip of particular refractive index. The same phenomena was also utilized in 
lenses ok. Now, if you remember when we were talking about uh, convex lens then uh, what we said is that if we launch a plane wave then what happens is that due to the thickness of the lens this part of the wave it gets slowed down while the part which is falling on the thinner ends of the lens it also gets slowed down but the extent of slowness of these upper and lower part of the wave is smaller than that of this middle portion of the wave and therefore here on the right hand side of the lens we again get a wave front but the central part of the wave front is delayed while the uh, upper and lower portions these are ahead in time and this is why the wave front after refracting through a through a convex lens it get curved ok and the curvature is such that it focuses the light with propagation and therefore we see that the parallel beam of light which falls on the uh, concave lens it get focuses on the other side of the lens ok and this distance is known as focal distance and this is why this lens is called uh, convex lens ok. Similar analysis can also be made for concave lens ok. Now, here too we are using this uh, uh, this refractive index variation, but here uh, in case of convex lens uh, the refractive index is not varying, but the thickness of the medium is varying yeah? in the center the lens is thick while at the top and the bottom the lens is thin. Therefore, the light which is falling on, on the top and the bottom they are traveling a thinner uh, medium of higher refractive index while the B light which is uh, traveling through the center of the lens it, it is traveling uh, through a thicker uh, portion of the glass and therefore it get delayed ok and due to this relative delay the plane wave front get curved and the curvature is such that the wave front get focuses ok the wave front gets focused. The different part of the light get modulated differently and since the refractive index is periodic the due to this phase modulation we see a type of diffraction pattern which is similar to the amplitude modulated diffraction pattern ok. Therefore, to produce grating we can either use periodic alteration in phase or in amplitude or sometimes both ok. Now, usually when we have a grating and we launch a light then what happens is that it produces a zero order pattern and apart from the zero order it also produce higher order patterns. These are called first, first order diffraction, second order diffraction and this diffraction patterns are symmetric around the zero direction or the main axis ok. Therefore, first order, order is produced both in left and right hand side of the, the central pattern. These orders are differentiated by assigning plus or minus sign before the order numbers ok. Therefore, here we are calling plus 1 and uh, while on the other side we are assigning it or we are calling it minus 1 order ok. These are first order, second order, minus first order, minus second order and so on ok. And such type of grating this is our grating yeah, and such type of gratings are called transmissive grating or transmission grating. But there are also gratings which produce diffraction pattern in reflection direction ok or in the same direction from where the light is being launched ok. The, we are launching light here. Now, in the first medium itself now you see different orders here yeah? it is a 0 now here it is a plus 1 plus 2 here it is minus 1 minus 2. So, different orders of diffraction patterns are generated in reflection mode here. Therefore, this type of grating is called reflective grating ok and the first kind of grating is called transmission grating ok Refle and this is called reflective grating or reflection grating ok. As I said before this grating is analogous to 
many slit or multiple slit arrangement. Okay. Therefore, we can use the mathematical formulations which we developed in case of multiple slits. Okay. Now, recall the analysis of diffraction by many, many slits. Now, the, from there the irradiance is given by this expression where alpha is k a by 2 sin theta and beta is k b by 2 sin theta. Okay. Do remember that b is slit width okay. in case of grating it is the width of opening open portion and a is center to center separation in between the slit. Okay. Now, the different orders of grating it can be uh, calculated by uh, imposing the conditions of maxima. Okay. Now, where to find the principal maxima? Principal maxima occur when this term is equal to n sin n alpha by alpha is equal to captain n. Okay. This we have already done in case of multiple slit uh, arrangement okay. and sin n alpha by alpha becomes equal to n for these values of alpha when alpha is equal to 0 plus minus pi plus minus 2 pi, but we know that alpha is given by k a by 2 sin theta yeah? alpha is equal to k a by 2 sin theta or alpha is equal to pi a sin theta by 2 where k is equal to 2 pi by lambda. Okay. Lambda is also here with this substitution now here you know that alpha is equal to integral multiple of pi. Okay. If, if you equate it with integral multiple of pi okay, then you get a sin theta is equal to m lambda okay. and this is the condition which you derive now. Okay. Sorry, 2 is gone from here, yeah. k is 2 pi by lambda then 2 and 2 will go away. Therefore, this condition where which says that alpha must be integral multiple of pi is equivalent to a sin theta m, m is equal to m lambda. Okay where theta m is angle of diffraction and m represent the order of diffraction. Okay. m can take any values varying from minus infinity to plus infinity. Yeah. m is an integer, it is it is 0 plus minus 1 plus minus 2. Okay. This equation, this equation is for finding principal maxima in diffraction grating and therefore, this equation is named as grating equation. Okay. A sin theta m is equal to m lambda equation is called grating equation, but this equation is valid only for normal incidence. Okay. Suppose you have a grating here and if the incident light is falling normally on the plane of the grating, then only we can apply equation number 37. Okay. And equation number 37 is called grating equation for normal incidence. Now, there are few points which we can take away from uh, this grating equation. Uh, I will write here the grating equation A sin theta m is equal to m lambda. Now, for a source having broad continuous spectrum, the m is equal to 0 or 0th order image correspond to the undeflected white light view of the source, which is very much clear. Whenever we talk about 0th order diffraction pattern, then we will have to substitute m is equal to 0. And when m is equal to 0, theta m would be 0 okay, or theta 0 is equal to 0 because m would be substituted by 0. Okay. Now, irrespective of the wavelength, all the colors will go in the same direction for 0th order diffraction pattern. Okay. And therefore, we will find white light in theta 0 is equal to 0 direction. Okay. The second point is that the grating equation which is a sin theta uh, a sin theta m is equal to m lambda is dependent on lambda. Okay. Lambda is there on the right hand side of the grating equation. Therefore, the grating equation is dependent on lambda and therefore, if m 
is not equal to 0, the different colors will form their diffraction maxima at different angles. Okay? The various color images of the source corresponding to slightly different angle spread out into a continuous spectrum okay? and the different order of a spectrum appears on either side of theta is equal to 0 direction. Okay? What this sentence says is that if the incoming light is white light and we, if we are talking about order of uh, diffraction which is different from zero order diffraction, then different colors will go in different direction and they will form their respective maxima at different angle of diffraction. Now, since A sin theta is equal to m lambda for non-zero value of m, sin theta is proportional to lambda. Okay? Larger the lambda is, larger will be the angle of diffraction. Okay? Now, therefore, this is how the white light pattern look like. The first comes the violet color and at last will come the red color. Okay? For a smaller lambda, theta would be smaller. Okay? Now, again let us look into the grating equation. Now, suppose we are talking about a particular diffraction order with a particular wavelength. It means the right hand side of this grating equation is fixed, m is fixed as well as lambda is fixed. In this case, the smaller a becomes, the fewer will be the number of visible orders. Okay? Or let me correct myself. In grating equation in the right hand side, <coughs> there is m and wavelength. Now, suppose we have a grating and we are launching some particular wavelength, uh, so some light of particular wavelength on it. Okay? Now, for smaller a, the smaller a becomes in equation 37, the fewer will be the number of visible orders. Why? Because as the equation suggests, this is, this is the relation. Now, if you reduce a, then m will also be reduced. Now, with this, we we will move ahead. Now, till now we were talking only about normal incidence. Now, what will happen if, uh, if a light falls on the grating obliquely? Okay? Now, for oblique incidence, now suppose this is our grating okay? and this is the ray, the parallel beam of light which is falling on the grating at certain angle of incidence. Here it is theta i. Okay. Now, again th suppose that this grating is reflection grating, therefore different uh, uh, orders of diffraction would be formed in the same medium, in the same, uh, in the first medium itself. Now, angle of incidence here is theta i and uh, these two rays are falling, the beam is falling on the grating and they are reflecting and going back in this direction. Okay, now, from this figure, you can calculate the optical part length difference between the rays which is falling on the grating and then reflecting back into some direction. The optical path length difference would be equal to A C which is this length minus B D which is this length. How did we calculate it? The traditional way, we dropped the perpendicular uh, from the angle of uh, from the point of incident to the other ray. Similarly, here this is the perpendicular and on incidence the extra path is BD, on reflection the extra path is AC. Okay? The total path length difference would be the difference between the two which is AC minus BD and from the figure itself you can calculate what AC and BD is, the difference between the two point of incidence is A and the angle of incidence and reflection R diffraction is known. Angle of incidence here is theta i and theta m is the angle of diffraction for this particular uh, ray bundle or th for this particular beam. Okay? Therefore, the optical path length difference would be given by A sin theta m minus sin theta i. Okay? Now, 
in grating equation we were having a sin theta is equal to m lambda where a sin theta if you uh, look back then it this grating equation resembles with that of the Young's double slit experiment ok. In Young's double slit experiment too we were getting some fringes, but in grating we have lot many uh, slits therefore, the, the, the pattern would be intensified ok. Now, once we know that optical part length difference then we can again uh, write the grating equation for oblique incidence for both transmission and reflection ok. For both transmission grating and reflection grating the grating equation can be written very easily once we know this optical path length difference and this would be equal to a sin theta m minus sin theta i is equal to m lambda ok. This term is now extra here. Now, you see that there is some modification in the, the usual grating equation for normal incidence ok. This term is added and it is uh, the contribution due to the, the oblique incidence. Now, this expression applies equally well regardless of the refractive index of the transmission grating. The transmission refractive index of the grating material does not play any role here ok and it would be very nice exercise if you can prove why the refractive index of the material medium of the grating medium does not play any role ok. With this let us uh, move ahead. Now, whenever you see a grating person then uh, the majority of the light a majority of the power goes to the in zero theta ok and then whatever is left it get distributed in the higher order diffraction pattern ok. But most of the uh, of the available light energy is concentrated in the zero order ok and this is what is written here. One of the main disadvantage of the devices examined thus far and in fact the reason for their obsolescence is that they spread the available light energy out over a number of lower radiance spectral order ok. Now, what does this sentence want to convey? This sentence says that whatever devices we have learned so far are the grating tool. The most of the energy is concentrated in the zeroth order and then rest of the energy are distributed in different higher order diffraction maxima ok. The zeroth order has maximum energy the first a little uh, lower, second bit more lower, third a bit more lower ok. The energies are there in different orders, but they get reduced as you go away as you increase the angle of diffraction ok. But now suppose you we want to do some spectroscopy ok. In that case we require sufficient uh, intensity sufficient irradiance in a given diffraction order. Then how to play with the intensity how to extract the intensity or the energy from the zeroth order to a given order where we want to perform some experiment or where we want to study something ok. This is major concern. Now, to shift energy out of the useless zeroth order into the higher order spectra gratings are given controlled ruling grooves ok and most modern gratings are of this shape and the grating with the ruling grooves are called blazed grating and one such blazed grating is shown here schematically in this figure ok. Now, you see that there is some angle that the, the grating surface is now oriented at some angle here yeah it is a he in this direction and then it is going back then again the same angle then again it is going back again the same angle the going back ok. This type of grating is called blazed grating ok. Now, uh, while studying the point oscillator in our in our very first few lectures of diffraction we first assumed that all these oscillators or uh, this antenna array they are oscillating in the same phase ok and then we did some mathematical calculations ok and thereafter we deliberately introduce a initial phase 
and we assumed that this initial phase, it is the phase difference between the adjacent oscillator. Now, if we assume say a silent phase difference between the adjacent oscillator, then depending upon this phase value, the magnitude of the phase, we saw, we studied that the grating spectrum can be tuned, it can be oriented in a desired direction. The same thing is now being implemented here in case of grating. Okay. Earlier with point oscillator or point antenna array, we incorporated some initial phase and with that phase we found that the, the maxima, the position of maxima can be oriented in a desired direction. The same initial phase is now here too and it is in the form of tilt of this grating element. You see this element is tilted by gamma with respect to the horizontal. Now by playing with this tilt, this gamma, we can shift energy from one uh, portion of the grating spectrum to the other, okay. from say center portion from the zeroth order pattern to some say uh, second order pattern. Okay. Now say we are dealing with a reflection grating. Okay. Most of the incident energy undergoes specular reflection in reflection grating. Okay. What is a specular reflection? It is the same re reflection which we see in mirrors. Yeah. So, for a reflection grating, most of the incident light undergoes specular reflection as if from a planar mirror. It follows from the grating equation that if theta m is equal to theta i means angle of incidence is equal to angle of diffraction, then this corresponds to 0th order that is m is equal to 0 and all of this light is essentially wasted. It goes in the same direction where from the light came. Okay. And what do I mean by wasted? Wasted means from the sense of spectroscopy it is of not any use okay because all the constituent wavelength will now overlap okay now to resolve this problem in 1888 lord rayleigh suggested that and he also did it theoretically okay lord rayleigh suggested that it was theoretically possible to shift energy out of useless zeroth order into one of the higher order spectra now this is our grating, we are launching light, this is our 0th order and these are the higher orders. Okay. And now he is saying that just by incorporating some initial phase, we can siphon out the energy from the 0th order into some relevant order. Now in 1910, Robert Williamson Wood successfully designed ruled groups with a controlled shape. Now this is called the blaze grating, this is what is shown here. Now here B which is uh, the width of the slit is shown here and the slit to slit separation A is again shown here, it represents this separation. Now angular position of non-zero order theta m values are determined by A which is shown here, lambda the wavelength of light and angle of incidence. Okay. Do note that in case of blazed grating, all the measurements are ang ang all the measurements of angles are performed from the normal to the grating plane okay this is the grating plane the lower plane the horizontal plane okay and therefore theta i and theta m are also measured from the normal to the grating plane and not with respect to the individual groove surface okay the angles are not measured with respect to the normal to the groove surface it is measured with the normal to the grating plane okay the base of the grating is our grating plane okay which remain the same throughout the grating now specular reflection is governed by blaze angle gamma what is blaze angle this blaze angle is this angle of this tilt and it can be varied independently of theta m now here you see that a light is falling on this uh, particular groove and you see this is the normal to the grating plane 
which is normal to this base plane not to this plane yeah and all the angles are measured from this normal. Now, angle of incidence is theta i okay, and the, the so say the 0 th other are appearing here then this is theta 0. Okay. Now, if you talk of usual reflection then it is shown here this is the angle incidence this is the normal to this uh, part of the slope and this is the reflected beam. Okay. Now, if you take all into account together then this is the ray which is falling on the on the this section of the grating the angle of incidence is measured from the normal to the grating plane this is the normal to this the wedge portion of the grating. Now, this normal would be the, the angle of this normal with respect to the normal to the grating plane would be gamma which is nothing but this angle the wedge angle angle of the wedge and this is our reflected uh, uh, beam which is at angle theta r. Okay. Do note that that all angles are being measured from the normal to the grating plane and in this particular case theta i and theta r uh, they both are on the same side of the normal. Okay. Therefore, sign con considerations which we discussed in geometrical optics will also come into the picture here. Okay, having done this, now say that suppose that the incident wave is normal to the plane of the blazed reflection grating. Okay. In this case, since the incidence is normal to the blazed reflection grating that is this is the incidence then theta is equal to 0. When theta is equal to 0 then for m is equal to 0 theta not would also be 0. It means that in 0 order the 0 order would be in the direction of incidence itself. Okay. And in this case for a specular reflection theta i minus theta r will be equal to 2 gamma and most of the diffracted radiation is therefore concentrated about theta r is equal to minus 2 gamma. Okay. Here minus sign is appearing because both incident and the reflected is on the same side of the normal. Therefore, we see this minus sign before 2 gamma. Okay. I repeat for a specular reflection theta i minus theta r would be 2 gamma which is very much clear from the figure and most of the diffracted radiation is concentrated about theta r is equal to minus 2 gamma diffraction uh, angle. Theta r is equal to minus 2 gamma it can easily be derived from theta i minus theta r is equal to 2 gamma provided theta i is equal to 0. This is all for the introduction of the grating. In the next class, we will talk about the uses, one of the application of the grating which is in spectroscopy. Okay. I end my lecture here. Thank you for listening to me. See you in the next class.